it's four o'clock, ladies and gentlemen. I think we might start. Welcome, everyone. Um, we would like to acknowledge this land that we meet on today is the traditional lands for the Gaona people and that we respect their spiritual relationship with their country. We also acknowledge the Gaona people as the custodians of the Greater Adelaide region and that their cultural and heritage beliefs are still as important to the living Gaona people today. Now, roll call. I think the Mayor is the only one that's missing, isn't she? Um, we have an apology from Margaret House, who's unwell. Um, does anyone know if Karen's just running a bit late, perhaps, is she? Okay, well, we'll move on. Are there any motions to grant leave of absence? No. Is there any leave of absence? No, there isn't. And, that, and the only non-attendant so far is the mayor, and she may yet come in. Any declarations of interest? Would someone like to confirm, move the confirmation of the minutes for the 8th of April? Okay, Helen and Di, thank you. Is there any discussion? If not, those in favour, please show. Against, Karen. Right, we'll move to item six, officers' reports. Jacinta. Through the chair, um, the committee will see for the Heritage Inquiries report for the previous three months, we had 21 inquiries, including inquiries from Queensland and New South Wales, and with the vast majority of those, we were able to help the inquirer. Any questions? I've got a couple. Um, um, I'd like, just like to point out to those of you who haven't yet picked up that the numbering has just left out the second digit from 10 on. Um, in the numbered section. Um, I'm, I'm interested in the uh, Gauna artworks and Gauna heritage inquiries. What were they about? Uh, so through the chair, we were asked if there were any Gauna artworks in the collection. So we gave information about the Gauna shield and the emu cloak. And the Gauna heritage questions was an individual trying to um, understand their potential connection to the Ghana community. Oh, okay. And so we directed them to the oh. Ghana and the Living Cultural Centre because that's the best place to make those inquiries. Great, thank you very much. Anyone else have any questions or anyone want to continue to discussion? Someone like to move acceptance of that report, Di? Someone like to second that? Anybody, Paul? Any further discussion? If not, please show those in favour. Thank you. And that's all right. Okay. Welcome. 6.2, the Cultural Heritage Centre budget update. David. So through the chair, the centre's operating very well at the end of that quarter. Um, you'll note that we are on track pretty much across the board and well underexpended. We do have, uh, I believe it's in the agenda today, a proposal for some um, preservation and conservation work to use up some of that expenditure. Um, but overall, the Heritage Centre continues to perform extremely well with its budget. Thank you. Any questions, David? Any discussion? No? All right. Someone would like to move acceptance of that report, please? Di, seconder, please. And Deb. Any further discussion? If not, those in favour, please show. Carried. Thank you, David. 6.3, possible future exhibitions, Jacinta. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, that was a, it was a fascinating, um, in, uh, well, a fascinating investigation, um, looking at the objects in the collection that would support the themes that had been identified at the previous workshop and by the committee on the night. Um, and to see where the gaps, where the big significant gaps are in the collection, which will be very helpful to us going forward. Based on the number one recommendation of the committee members, we have detailed that we believe that music would be a good next exhibition topic. And as outlined in the report, it would give us an opportunity to present all of the additional research that has been done on the pianos to the community. It's quite extensive and I think and interesting. And while the committee members may be very aware of all of the history of the 
both pianos. Um, and while that history is available for anyone in a committee report, more of the um, community see things in exhibitions. So we did think that that was a possibility to touch on that should the committee elect to um, suggest that as the next topic. We would like to then suggest that we do women and communications as the follow-up topic. That will give us time to go out to the community to source objects and further information about that topic. I think, as I said in the report, I think it's of great interest. It'll have a, a wide interest in much the same way that kitchens do, in that, that the, uh, communication is a topic that covers everybody. But at this stage, we don't have in, uh, objects to support the storytelling, and that's important to round out the story. So that's the staff's suggestions that we use music for the next year and communications and the stories of women involved in communications in the following year. Thank you, Jessica. Dah, yes, sure. If we're going to do the, well, the music and theatre, and you're talking about the pianos, um, we're not going to pay to have them put back in the gallery, are we? <laughs> so through the chair, no, we certainly um, are not planning on moving the pianos at all. I think we can tell the stories without moving the pianos. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yes, the, the women in war, I'm a little, so the suggestion is not to do that in the next two years, particularly given that 23 is the 80th anniversary of the fan of the golf squadron um, but there was some suggestion or some discussion that there is a cent there's a commemoration of the Vietnam War coming up was that you for you to right yes if we were going to do that would be better to wait until it was a you know, a certain year, so that would be, I'm pretty sure that's what I said, didn't I? Yeah, so rather than lose it, yeah. maybe we could just flag that maybe that is postponed, because I don't like the idea of losing the idea, especially as it came into the votes, um, maybe it's just a, a bit of a longer um, timeline. So through the chair, all the ideas are still valid ideas. This proposal is just for the next two. Uh, we would bring back those ideas that the committee have come through. We'd be workshopping with the next iteration of the committee as well about future ideas as well. We could add to this resolution that uh, the women in war be considered along the centenary of the Vietnam War if the committee chose to do that way. Uh, but as from an administration perspective, all of those ideas are still valid to be brought back on an annual review basis to the committee. Yeah, I think I would like to add it because I think that's an, another way of alerting the community that we have, we're doing this long term planning now. And I, yes. <laughs> I'm just thinking consideration be made, so as a point three, consideration uh, be made to uh, uh, including women in the war and uh, commemoration of the Vietnam War in future exhibitions after uh, 2023. So you've got the consideration, so we're not locked in. Yeah. And you, you, if we haven't got it right, uh, it gives us flexibility to change that. What do you think, Chair? Do you think the wording's appropriate? Uh, women in war as well. Women and war or women in war? Women and war. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Um, for those of you, and I suppose most of you now have seen the CWA exhibition downstairs, um, they have a lot to contribute in, in both of these uh, exhibitions actually, both in communicate music as well. I mean, they had a thriving choir and yeah, which I didn't know, um, and also um, communications and war. So yeah, that'd be. And the National Trust has a lot on communications. Yeah, Chair, if I may, that was going to be another su suggestion. I don't know that we need to put it into the recommendations, but I would like to see that in preparation for 
next year is that we fairly quickly call a gathering of interested people in the community because the, you're quite right, the National Trust has got a lot, Martin Johnson's got a lot. So we, we, by this recommendation going through council, we're flagging to the community. And I think we really need to quickly start to have a bit of a planning meeting. Karen? Well, I was thinking of calling uh, after the um, History Festival month, uh, calling a, uh, a meeting of the History Network, that might suffice and we can put that yeah. on the agenda. Would that, would that be reasonable? Uh, I'd make a definite invitation to the CWA. You may not consider themselves the members of that group. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? Uh, I'll have to think. Yeah. RSL. I'll, yes, the RSL, obviously, yes. Um, yeah, should we? I and suppose Ke we don't really need Kerry that. Kerry Barrett is, is a very no. active member of the uh, Let's see what comes out RSL. Of She's one of the few very active women members of it. Yes. What we could do, perhaps, Mayor, is um, broaden the email list that that goes out to organisations that we know have heritage collections. So it would include the RSL, it would include the CWA, and they may not wish to come... Well, they can see an agenda then, and that's when they can choose whether to come or not. Does mm. that yeah. would that work? Do you think? I think that's probably the best yeah, way. Yeah, groups to do it. that don't necessarily yeah. consider themselves historic in that sense, but mm. obviously are like the CWA. Mm. Yeah. And it might extend that also to the sporting clubs, which we know also have historical collections. Yeah. And. Yeah. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Thank you. All right, so would someone like to um, move those three options, Karen, and seconded by Helen? Those in favour, please show. Thank you, everyone. Right, we're going to restore a fashionable lady. <laughs> well, that's me, obviously. <laughs> I'm happy to move that way, Chair, the officer's recommendation. You, is that okay? Seconder for that, Paul, and discussion. Helen. Um, can I just let, let you know that um, since this report was written, um, since the original um, research report was submitted into the Heritage Group, into the Heritage Collection, I've met with Paul Barnett, so there is more, even more information. So it's probably going to be a bit of an ongoing um, uh, process of updating the story behind it. But Paul is very um, excited and interested to know that this is because of the family connection. So um, yeah, it just gets more and more interesting. And it actually looks like, although we're still to lock it in, that it may well have been um, a painting that belonged to William and Hannah Barnett and then passed down through to Robert and Bertha. But we're still trying to, Paul's searching through some family records. We're going to try and get the will of William Barnett um, as well as Robert Barnett to see if we can locate it in some of the estates. So it gets quite interesting. If I may, Chair, um, and um, I think the information that's been provided in this report is the result of Cultural Heritage Centre's volunteers who have been very diligent and spent a lot of time creating that research and that backdrop, which is really, really helpful for us when we write our significant statements, but helpful for the community and the ongoing um, users of the Gawler Heritage Collections. This, this information now gets built on, as Helen says, as more and more comes to light, um, but it's in the catalogue and it will stay there. So it's highly, it's increased our knowledge of this painting significantly. It shouldn't be titled Portrait of a Fashionable Lady. Uh, we don't know what it should be titled, but potentially with this ongoing research, we'll have a correct name for it. Yeah, I was going to query that because it looks like a child, actually. Yeah. Uh, do we know who painted it? Through the chair, not at this stage. There's no visible signature. No, when the, when the cleaning yeah. happens, though, it may be able to identify yeah. the painting. Um, I did quite a bit of research on the Moliere painting when I did my talk a couple of years ago to the history team about art in Gawler. And it could be an original. It could be an original um, by an Italian artist um, who I Googled. The picture is listed in his art list of works. And if it was purchased by the Downers, it may very well be an original, in which case it may be worth a lot of money. Denise Schumann was researching it as well. 
um, I don't know how far she got, but she and I had quite a long discussion about it. Um, the guy's mind slipped my mind for a minute. But um, yeah, it, it lists all his work and where, where they currently held. This one's not listed as to being held anywhere. It's listed as one of his works, but not where it is. So it might be worth pursuing that. That's a, yeah, a bit of a who done it thing, yeah. One last comment, sorry. Uh, um, by Helen and I volunteering this type of level of research, what we're hoping to reinforce is the level of um, referencing that needs to happen so that the, that the research done can be followed by others. It just takes it to a level if we are trying to prove significance, other, other historians, other his, historical organisations can see the level of research done. It takes it away from stories or urban legends. It takes it into well-researched um, material. So hopefully we will continue. Thank you, Heather. Any other discussion? If not, would someone like to move acceptance of that proposal, please? Deb, seconded, done. Oh, it's already, we've already done it. Sorry, I've forgotten. I'm getting sent off. Sorry, folks. Thank you, everyone. Oh, right, those in favour, please, Sharon. Right, accepted, thank you, voted. All right. Items listed for discussion, page 24. Yes, yes, go. In um, 6.3, uh, well, it, we didn't actually discuss it, but the um, photographs, the, um, I'm trying to think what it's called now, I'm just have a look. The recover, Recovering the Past, I'd just like to say that that was that was brilliant. I actually found that quite moving. All of that, I thought, I thought that was really amazing. Through chair, thank you. I'm I'm sure that the community, when they get to see that exhibition, will be moved. Also, it's an international touring exhibition of some importance, and we're the first cultural organisation in South Australia to host it. Yeah, I, I agree. I I thought the same. Very powerful. Mm -hmm. So, items listed for discussion, 7.1. Chair, can I just ask, with, the, with those, it's great to see we've got visiting exhibitions. Is that coming out of the Cultural Heritage Gallery budget or is that out of the Civic Centre budget? I'm just curious. So, through the Chair, um, we are funding that through a combination of the Cultural Heritage Centre operations budget, not the exhibition budget. That's a separate pocket, uh, as well as the Civic Centre operations budget for programming. So it's a joint initiative between the two areas. Thank you. So is there any discussion on the running sheet for the items list for discussion? No? If not, we'll move on to, to item eight. Uh, uh, tour, no, tour off-site storage facility. So through the chair, um, I'd like to thank the committee for having a look at the on-site storage facilities at the last meeting. And we can aim to look at the off-site at the next meeting, weather permitting. Thank you. Helen. So, um, as I'm aware, there are two off-site storage facilities. One is the Paxton Depot and one is the, the other one. Will we be looking at both? Because I would really like to see where the table is. Uh, through the chair, which table? Oh. <laughs> so, um. <laughs> the one that's got lots of knights around it. <laughs> Uh, through the chair, there is actually a couple of other tables in a different storage facility um, at Chess Storage. Uh, we, we can do both, yes. So, so there is um, objects from the collection at the depot at Paxton Street, and then they're across the road from that at Paxton, at Gawler Self Storage. Thank you. Any other questions about this topic? 8.1, if not, we'll move to 8.2, ex exhibition feedback process. Do you want to talk to that? So through the chair, it's our intention to bring a report to the committee at a later date about the, um, the best practice 
standards for exhibition evaluation. The, the gold standard is having an independent person stand there and speak to people in the exhibition. That of course is very um, labor intensive and resource high resource cost, but there are other um, standard mechanisms for evaluation, including feedback, um, numbers, all those sorts of things. So we're intending to bring a report at a later date. Helen, and then Karen. Um, it was also the discussion last month, it was not only about how it's gone, but how we capture information from the community you want to add to it. So if it's triggered somebody to remember something or offer something, how we how we, is it happening and how are we capturing that? Uh, through the chair, op op offers of objects um, haven't been directly associated with an exhibition, but I often think that when people visit an exhibition and they start thinking about what they have and its pertinence to Gaula's history, that may inadvertently jog that memory and that desire to, to complete that. So nobody, for instance, has offered us anything associated with kitchens or any of the um, manufacturing, food manufacturing that's in the exhibition. That doesn't mean that what's being offered coming in in the next few weeks or months isn't, hasn't been triggered by that. So they're two different things, I think. And interestingly enough, donations, we've um, had a significant financial donation. And again, that wasn't associated with the exhibition as such, that was associated with the work that we do. Thank you, Karen. So uh, apologies, I wasn't here last meeting, but I think it's a really interesting subject, feedback or evaluation. Um, Often evaluation is a combination of quantitative and qualitative, equally as important as the other, not just about numbers, but it is about the um, experience uh, of, of the people that attend or uh, have association. They might be writing on the little, um, the cooking. I think that's been a really useful piece of um, feedback is how many people are actually writing about their favourite and what memories it invokes. I think it's a really lovely interactive um, opportunity for people. So I think that from an evaluation and feedback point of view, I'd like to see that continue in every exhibition of some form of interaction, some form of ongoing um, feedback. So it's a point of sale, if you like. So you don't have to do it after, you do it during the exhibition when you're excited by it. Now you, you are, influenced by it so it's subjective but that's still okay um yeah yeah I'd be keen to see what I, I don't think having an independent person annoying people during a <laughs> during an exhibition certainly annoy me I can't stand going up perfect strangers asking what you think yeah so it is it, it when you go to an exhibition um it's often a reflective process because you don't think of things straight away um you, you might think of things, you might think of words or memories or, or something, um, but you don't always articulate that in, in some formal sentence or, you know, a tangible uh, opinion. Uh, so I think that experiences and feedback comes in many forms. So I guess as long as we keep it really flexible and open, uh, I think we'll get the sort of feedback that we're looking for. One of the things that's occurred to me, I just wondered if you um, are able to garner the feedback from the Civic Centre guides, because we take people through that exhibition on a regular basis, whichever exhibition it happens to be, and get a lot of feedback, uh, some of which we record, but not, I'm sure we don't all record all of it, um, and Sam's probably got stuff. Do you garner that at all? So through the chair, if it comes to us in a written format, um, so as an email, you know, a visitor suggested this, a visitor liked that, so they're all trimmed and we keep those formats. The, um, any conversations in the corridor, we don't write down, unfortunately. It's just that they're a rich source of feedback, that's all. Um, and the other thing I was going to say is that a lot of exhibitions have post box that you can put comments in and, um, and some incentive for doing it, perhaps. And they're useful as well, written comments. Even if it's just leave us your contact details and we'll keep you informed of future exhibitions. I mean, it, it is, I agree with Mayor. We need to keep it really flexible, but we need to keep garnering stuff because if we don't, then when we're going to need it, it it's not recorded. And I think 
if we if I, we turn our minds to that and do actively do it now, it will it will pay off soon in the future. Thank you, Helen. Is there anybody else that wants to make any comments at all? No. Or oh. are there any questions without notice? No. Motions on notice, Helen. I haven't put words to this, but I actually want to. Um, I want to acknowledge. I ask the committee if we can acknowledge the efforts the staff have put into um, coordinating uh, Gawler History Month um, events. I think it's been a particularly noticeable um, focus on that, both um, in the t in the town, but particularly within the Civic Centre. And I would like to acknowledge the effort that that's taken. And the, and the success and the comments coming back from people who've not yet been in the Gifford Gawler Civic Centre but have been attracted by those events. So I need some help with the words, please. <laughs> yeah, on behalf I of the committee. I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. It's been a fantastic effort. That the Gawler Heritage really has. Collection yeah. Committee would like to extend its heartfelt thanks. And congratulations. To, and congratulations. Yeah. Heartfelt thanks and congratulations. Well done, Sarah. <laughs> and um, Petra, too. To uh, uh, Cultural Heritage Centre staff uh, and all involved, rather than naming, I, I, just, I just think it's good to keep it without, because you always miss someone out, and that's not okay. Um, and all involved with uh, uh, History Month 2021. Uh, with History Month, uh, what was that, Chair? With, uh, well, I think the staff have been involved with other, uh, not just council events, but with other events too. So, and all involved with History Month events and activities and across... Yeah. No. Wouldn't I'm happy to cooperate, but I just well, couldn't. I, I, my feeling was, sorry, my feeling was that that the staff were doing it on behalf of the council, so that ah, they, yes. they were collaborating okay. with Giha, yes. for example. They were yes. collaborating with yes. individuals. So okay, so uh, to the cultural heritage centre staff and all and other members of council no this all is i where wanted I get... to say was it was the council's celebration the council celebrated history month and the cultural heritage staff um facilitated that didn't they no am i wrong no you're right but i think it extends beyond that because it goes back to the mayor's um mm calling together of the networking team in the ah, planning for ah. So it's, it is broader yeah. than just council. Okay. It is, it's a, more of a yeah. community coordination. Yeah. Okay. Deborah, did you want to say something? I was just going to suggest that we say all involved with Gawler's History Month. With Gawler's events. History Month? Yes. Well done. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> through, through the chair, a couple of quick ones, if you don't mind. Um, there's not actually a thing of Gawler's History Month. I don't care. But also, <laughs> also, um, it's not History Month, it's a History Festival. Gawler's, yes, it's so History. So whether we could change it to all involved with the History Festival 2021 event activities in Gawler. Yes. yes. Okay, I'll, I'll accept that, David. We've got to have Gawler in there somewhere. <laughs> okay, got two brains on this committee at least. <laughs> History Festival. There you go. Thank you. I'm happy to second Thank that. Thank you, everybody. You're happy to second that. So it's moved. Helen seconded Karen. Those in favour, please show. Against, carried. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'll just introduce, if I may, the 10.1 notice of motion, which I've put, put up for us to look at. Um, at our last meeting, Petra took us on a... Um, inspection, if you like, tour of the um, on-site uh, heritage collection storage. And um, uh, in doing so, we were 
uh, able to see that room G1 and the room that's adjacent to the research centre between there and the council staff's area um, were being used by the, by the um, collection um, staff, but uh, sort of um, ad hoc, not officially. And um, it seemed to us, or it certainly seemed to me, but it certainly seemed to some of us in discussion, that, that it would be good to have it as some dedicated space because there was obviously a quite serious shortage of space for some of the stuff that's on uh, in the collection on this site. And so um, I have put together two um, notices of motion, as you can see there, they're fairly self-explanatory, I think. Um, is there any discussion that anyone would like to? No, I wasn't at the last meeting. So room G1 is the little meeting room with the table in it? That it's, through the, it's the meeting room attached to the vault, so to speak, adjacent to the Heritage Gallery. Oh. So that's a separate room, right? And full of stuff. Lower, and and so the workroom is the one I'm thinking of. That's the meeting room. Oh, okay. So I kept thinking G1 was the workroom. Okay. So you want that room, which has basically been a storage room anyway, mm, exactly. um, and the lower ground, and become an additional storage space, and that can prepare a report that provides designs and costs. So. What what was the discussion oh, okay. on that okay. particular room, which is I'm specifically yeah. talking about the workroom yes. in the Galoa yes. What sure. was the discussion okay. around that well, one? Well, one of them was that there could be cupboards lining that room and other other possible forms of storage for documents and stuff. Um, because it's a large space, it doesn't have to be completely taken over by storage. It can still be accessed by people if they want to have their lunch. But it did occur to us that there were other places where people could have their lunch. I mean, there's a table and chairs outside in the kitchen area and so on. It doesn't have to be used for that. Um, it's just that there was a real dearth of space for the on-site on collection and that really needed more space. And those two spaces seem to be um, patently, obviously uh, useful spaces to take on more storage. Guy and then Deb. Um, my observations were that the room G1 would never be leased out anyway, because if you wanted to go to the vault, you'd have to go in through somebody's room, and it already is being used as a storage room. And the workroom, as, as you said, Judy, is a big area. You could, you could have storage around the outside, around the walls, and still have a workable table in the middle, which could be used for working or lunches or meetings. And, and, you know, so and, and for staff, not not to let, but for staff to use in other forms. So yes, I agree totally with Thank that. you. Deb? Sorry, I'd just like to um, confirm that the types of storage it's going to be used for is actually um, spelt out. Um, I, don't, I think we can say storage, but I think we need to say it's useful for this kind of storage or yeah, that's all. Yes, indeed. Karen. I'm really glad you brought that up because um, that workroom, I'm not talking about G1, I'm talking about workroom down on the lower ground floor, was always meant to be part of the Heritage Centre space. And it, it, it's not meant to be a lunchroom. I know it's a default lunchroom, but it's not meant to be that. It's meant to be an extension of the Cultural Heritage Centre, so uh, further research area. So I, I completely agree with you that if uh, there's going to be extra storage, it's not for lunches, it's not for staff belongings, it's actually for the heritage collection and any uh, uh, relevant function, uh, because otherwise it'll become a lunchroom. And I, I, I think that needs to be spelt out. It's not a lunchroom. It, it's a great little private area, um, and but it is part of the, the, the Heritage Centre function area. So, yes, I think if we can spell that out. And in regard to G1, um, yeah, it, it, you've got you've got that heri that that's those slate uh, shelves. I think are heritage listed. I, 
I think, is that correct? I'm pretty sure that the heritage architect had a lot to say about that room at the time. Um, so there may be restrictions, but also how you can make that room work so it's usable, but not a health safety issue. And, you know, where you've got just stuff everywhere. So be interested to see how you'd actually make that room functionable with the, yeah, with the restrictions that are there. Uh, so through the chair, um, my only concern with the workroom being a storage area and still a meeting space is currently I control the environmental controls in the vault and in the underground stairs. So I control how much light is there and how much and, and any variations to the air conditioning and the humidity levels. If it becomes a workspace that other people can access who are outside of that, then that um, present, presents potential risks to the collection. Um, so that was a concern about using that space to store an additional storage space. Uh, Paul and then Helen. Yeah, um, I just want to clarify, G1, I thought when we this facility was designed, that was going to be a, an area for preparing for exhibitions and storage for the exhibitions, is that right? So through the chair, that's very much its use as well. So as we get closer towards an exhibition, we initially um, assemble items in that space. So further on Paul's point, um, I guess our impressions were that it, it is now to a point where it needs some investment. It's, it's certainly, we can see that it's a storage area, but it's not, it probably would benefit for having proper storage and proper handling, you know, rather than just a, a large. But um, going back to the workroom, um, I, I also remember in the planning stages, it was to, it certainly was a Gorlisic uh, heritage area. Um, but it was explained to us and perhaps um, we misunderstood that it was actually a joint use area and that caused us some problems. I do recall that that was to be used um, and, and there's plenty of room in there for additional storage, particularly thinking forward in the next, you know, if we're planning forward to five years, what was coming into the collection. Um, but I can remember having discussions about if we had a visiting researcher um, or somebody in artist and re uh, you know, research and residence, that that would become a place that that could be used away from the general public in the, in the other areas. So I'd, I'm keen to see it, I support it, and I'm keen to see us move forward on it. Yes, Karen. How do we manage your concern around uh, um, environmental control uh, you know, what, what type of items would go into that area? But through the chair, they would be the ones that we termed less vulnerable and less valuable. So the, um, the storage facility off the research centre is where we have most of the significant items um, because we can access and check in there daily. And then the vault and G1 are wonderful spaces for large, infrequently accessed items. The vault, because of the slate, is very stable in its temperature mm -hmm. and G1 is air conditioned, so we monitor those as well. So it would tend to be those sorts of things that um, are items that will potentially come up to the committee for deaccessioning. I think when we're talking about long-term storage, we need to be mindful of the fact that um, with the last deaccessioning of the photocopied maps, we freed up a metre, a linear metre of storage. We've still got a lot of deaccessioning to work through with the committee, so there will be additional storage. All of the births, deaths and marriages, which is cupboards full, have to go back to state records. Again, that will free us up with a lot of storage. We're having 18 square metres of hanging installed in the storage area off the research centre before the end of the financial year that will alleviate a lot of that hanging. So I, th it, it's my opinion that we're just a little bit too soon before under understanding exactly what we have and what we're going to keep before designing new systems for everything that needs to be done. I think there's an opportunity to get that right, right based on what the committee has worked through with staff is staying in the collection as a physical object, not as a digital object, and then um, aware of what might come in in later years. I hear you. I guess um, it just seemed to be an uh, underutilised space being encroached upon by other parts of council. 
And I agree. So, for example, the local history collection, the research books that people would come in, the, you know, that's the type of area that seems to me at the moment that the existing bookshelves are full and there will need to be some growth. So extending into that area doesn't need to be instantly, but marking that that's what the next step will be, I think is useful to remind people that that's, that's the intended use of that room. Die. Um, point two, does it, it is asking for a report that pro provides, mm -hmm. so we can basically then uh, let the, um, the staff sort of say what they want to use it for. We're not saying what it's going to be used for at this stage. No, that's that's indeed correct, and it's an important part of that motion actually that it it asks staff to advise us in fact. All right, well, I'll formally move that motion. Would someone like to second it? Deborah? Okay, we've had an ongoing discussion. Is there any more anyone who wants to add before we vote on them? If not, those in favour, please show. Against, carried. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for the discussion, too. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'll close the meeting. Next meeting is the 10th of June. Don't get too cold on the way home. <laughs> <laughs>